Well, here it is with the front main battery rack in place. There's still the small front battery rack that goes in front here, mounts there. We've connected the motor to controller cables prior to installing the rack just for ease since it uh, kind of sits on top of things. Made it a little bit easier to do it in that sequence. So next we'll be installing this front battery rack section. Well, here's a shot with the heat shield in place. We're using a heat shield on the center portion of the battery rack since it sits right on top of the motor. It's only a few inches, few inches of clearance and so this will help protect the bottom of the batteries from getting hot. So on top of this heat shield goes our 3 16th ABS. Well the first battery rack that gets cells installed and that really gets completed is the very front rack. That's because the controllers get mounted on top of it. This is a situation that we try to avoid. Uh, we don't like having to stack things where you have to remove something to get to something else. But in this vehicle, we didn't have too many choices. We've got the cover laying on top right now. There will be one line will run inside the cover and come out here. The other one will come out directly here, runs underneath the controllers and comes out here. The controllers are spaced up off of that. There's also three straps that come across and hold the cells down. So those are the cells, six of them wired in series. Um, cell booties will go over the top of the interconnects and then the cover goes on top of that. So here's something that we noticed the other day. There's a little hose on the uh, clutch reservoir right here. And it's pretty much toast. You can see if it'll focus on it. And it's just old age. It's a 1964 car. Who knows how long that particular piece of line's been there anyway. It, uh, we noticed that there was a little puddle there. We're not really working in that area, so we noticed it right away, I guess. But, and so we've got a rag here kind of catching that so that it doesn't drip on the paint. But anyway, we'll have to take care of that. Well, here's a shot of the uh, progress with the controllers mounted in place. So you can see we have the chill plate mated to the uh, base of the controllers. A little more discussion on the battery racks, since that's kind of the topic of this episode. The battery racks, um, we use a metal frame. This is, uh, in this particular project, this is part of the motor mounting setup. You've seen in previous videos, the motor cradle and so forth. But this upper rack here is also part of the structural integrity of that motor mounting system. And so we have a metal frame rack and we use an ABS insert. It keeps the batteries clean. It's easy to clean. It absorbs some impact of driving down the road and it, like I said, it, it helps keep our batteries clean and snug. So we just line the uh, battery box with the ABS. And of course, this is sized so that, you know, once the cells are installed, they're snug. They're not going anywhere. And then our cell booties, which we'll show you later, go on top, and then a piece of ABS, and then a strap goes across that. That secures them in place. 
let's talk a little bit about the, the, the battery pack itself. Um, in this project, this is the most positive cell right here, this point right here. So it runs through this portion of the pack, runs through here, comes down to here. From here it goes to the six cells underneath the controllers here, and then back and to the rear pack. And then from the rear pack, back forward to our negative bus bar. So we're going to have interconnects between the cells. We use this copper strap. These come from EVTV. It's zinc plated copper strap. So you know the electrons flow on the outside of a wire so you got lots of strands. These have real good current flow and they have flex so you're not putting any stress or a lot less stress than other types of interconnects between your terminals. Okay, so that's what we use for interconnects. And then those are held in place with a bolt and we use bolts that have Loctite on them. And then we use a Nordlock washer. If you want information about those, just check them out online, Nordlock, N-O-R-D. And uh, this makes a really good uh, attachment setup, and we have found that uh, we inspect our shop vehicle. Uh, it averages 50 plus miles a day. We check it twice a year, every six months, check the interconnects, and we find that this system holds. Um, we could probably do it annually and not have an issue. Um, but we don't have any loose connections. This really seems to do the trick. Now, for connecting from pack to pack here, pack sections, we of course are using cabling. This is double lot um, welding cable. And we crimp lugs on the ends. And that's the part I want to talk to you about because we have other videos that talk about all these things in you know specifically but this is just a reminder when you're making up your uh, cables you want to make sure that especially on the short runs like we've had some short runs that go from our our main disconnect switch here uh, to our contactors and to our most positive so forth those are short runs and you want to make sure that you have your lugs on there um, oriented in such a way as to not be stressing on the cable and the and your terminals and so you need to kind of plan it ahead of time you know see the cable kind of has its a natural curve to it the way it came off the spool and so forth so we you know we don't go against the grain if you're going to make it if it's going to make an angle go with that angle and see how this has to be sometimes these will be 90 90 degrees from one another sometimes 180 degrees Sometimes, you know, they'll be the same. Uh, but plan all that out ahead of time. Think about the big picture. Okay, we're gonna close out this video with a shot of the, the trunk and the rear battery pack in place. Oh, guess you can't see too much. There's a cover laying there. So, a simple way to install and remove the cells. Just take a piece of cord, crimp a couple connectors on there. You can simply lift it out and put it in. Stay tuned for more. We will be starting wiring in the next episode. Hope to see you then.